What's up everybody, it's Angelina Love, seven time women's world champion, one half of the beautiful people, and you are listening to Toilet Side Talk. Have fun. The following podcast is brought to you by the Jonas Podcasting Network, found exclusively at wrestlingwithjonas.com. This is Brad Marcus, and welcome to another episode of Toilet Side Wrestling Talk. You are in for a treat today because today's guest is from Chicago, Illinois. Let me say that one more time. Today's guest is from Chicago, Illinois. We're all lucky. He's worked for such promotions as New Wave Pro, Paradigm Pro, Asylum Wrestling Revolution, Unsanctioned Pro. I could go on, but let's get to some of his opponents. They've been Sage Phillips, Braden Lee, Cole Radrick, Shannon Moore. Anakin Murphy, Solomon Tupu, Dante Martin, and I could go on, but I'm not going to. So let's welcome today's guest, someone from the greatest city on this planet, as well as Mars. I'm not sure about Jupiter and the other planets, but I give you Don't Die Miles. Miles, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing fine. Is it okay to call you Miles? Yeah, it's okay to call me Miles. I can, I can call you sir the rest of the time if you'd like. No, it's okay. I don't. Right, whatever. whatever. If that changes somewhere throughout the interview, that's fine. I'll go with that. Um, okay, so we, we talked about this right before. You're in Indiana. Uh, that's where you live? Yes, yes. But you grew up in Chicago? Yes, I grew up in uh, South Side of Chicago. I grew up on 69th and Eggleston. And oh, okay. yes, I was raised very, very, very gratefully by my mother. And I was, yeah, I grew up in Chicago. I moved to Indy when I started my wrestling career. Okay. Do, do, is, is your family, like your mom, is she still in Chicago? Um. So my mom is actually... Died about a year ago. Oh man, and, I'm uh, sorry. It's all good. And uh, she, yeah, she died. She died about a year ago. My family, some of them live in Chicago. Some mm-hmm. of them live in Indy right now. They're very, they're very split down okay. in Indy and Chicago. So, okay. So, did you what? Uh, what grade did you? Were you in Chicago until I like, can tell through high school? Uh, so until tenth grade. Okay. I was in high school. I went to uh, Calvin Park High School. Mm-hmm. Um, and I went to, uh, Parker middle school and high school. I went there. I went to a couple of schools. I traveled, like, I was like traveling the world for schools mm-hmm. as I were for like wrestling. It was, it was so weird to me. Was that hard to get used to? Yes, it was very, very much because I was missing out on like so much education and I was missing out on so, so much to like experience uh, high school. Yeah, like uh, now, and is it up, hard to maintain friendships? Yes, yes, it is. Uh, thank God for Facebook though. Um, yes, but also, seriously. But also like, uh, I end up unfortunately dropping out, but I'm trying to go back to get my GED and trying to work towards something 
that is going to better benefit my future. Sure, sure. And like, so like, were you able to do like in high school or, you know, middle school, like athletics regularly, or were you moving that often where it's like you'd start and then have to do something else? Uh, I actually played football a little bit. Oh, okay. Uh, I played for the Calvin Park football team. I played for like a game or two. Uh, and then I ended up getting like, I, I tried to make the meetings and the, mm -hmm. uh, football practice and everything. Sure. I could make those, but I couldn't make, uh, the football training because of, of my, like my schedule with like the buses and everything like that. Sure. I lived on the other side of town and then I had to catch like three buses and like one train or to get to one side of, this, uh, to one side of town, Calvin Park uh -huh. and get all the way do the same exact thing, but catch one one train or like three buses in order to get back to home. And so, that's if there's no snow or rain. Yeah. Like that's if all conditions are fine. Um, yeah. Oh my God. So you had to do that every day? I do that every, every day. Oh, every and day. were you doing this commute like by yourself or like with buddies or? Uh, So when my brother, my brother moved away. Mm -hmm. Mother, I had three brothers and three sisters. I'm okay, where sister. where did you rank? Uh, the youngest. Okay. Oh God. Okay. Go on. Yeah. Um. So after after my my mom could take care of us, we all split up somehow. And then my brother was in foster care. My mom she uh went ahead and just went over her business, mm -hmm. and then we all like split up somehow. Um. She lived with us in Indy before then. Uh, it was me, my brother taking care of her, and like I lived my youngest, my second to second to oldest brother. Mm -hmm. I lived with I've lived with pretty much everybody in my family before, and then we got to the point to where we all just like couldn't could, couldn't handle couldn't handle the responsibility of taking care of each other sure. uh, enough, and then we all just like split up. Still, it's like. It's like we like we're like a family that always come together at one point, and then we all mm -hmm. get up. Um, there's been a couple of times to where like I would I now now that I look back at it, like he they they all did the best they could to help yeah. me to help me uh, become who I am today, and to try to make sure that I stay on a path to being uh, my my best and absolute. Uh, Best and absolute self. Do they check in on you? Yeah, they do. Every we we're literally in a group chat and we talk about like random things, and then we'll start talking for one time, and then we'll pick up the group chat. Like if someone has gout, I'm like oh, that's somebody. <laughs> uh -huh. Like if somebody has gout or something like that, we're just like oh, how did this person get gout? <laughs> and then we end up talking about like um, all the things you could have said. You said gout. gout. <laughs> it, it was it's, it's it was in my mind. Okay. <laughs> But, okay, who do you who do you like the most of your siblings, and who do you like the least? No, I'm joking. You don't have to answer that. I was about to say, <laughs> I, I, I'm joking. So, are you even close with like your oldest sibling? Like, is there a big age uh, difference? A very big age difference. Uh, oh, okay. My oldest brother is like about, I think, going on forty five. Oh, I think wow. forty five. My other brother's like close to that age, and then my other brother, which is like the youngest out of all, like third, the third is the third brother, uh -huh. is like almost thirty now. And then my sisters, they have twins. They're like oh, in their thirties, almost thirties, I think, I believe. And then it's the my third youngest sister, which is like in her twenties, almost thirty. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm thinking, I'm, I think I'm about. You're 26. 26, yeah. <laughs> so you yeah. lead a whole different life then. Then I mean, they're in the, like, children are in the picture, that kind of stuff. You're not even close to that, I hope, yet. Yeah, not new, not yet. Oh, you're, you're uh, lucky. lucky, lucky person. <laughs> but I yeah. made that mistake twice. Twice? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like to say I have two too many children. Um, but, uh, whatever, that's a whole other episode. So, um, did, did you, what, was, okay. So I grew up, um, 25 minutes North of Chicago. Okay. Okay. So I think our neighborhoods were probably 
so completely different. What was your neighbor, the neighborhood like that where you grew up in Chicago? So my neighborhood was always about like, you got to be in before, like before the, the, before the street lights come on pretty much. Uh-huh. And that's literally what my mom always told us is to get in the house where she likes to come on us. She's going to come out and whoop our butts. Uh-huh. And we live by that motto of my mom knows what she's talking about. Cause she has to protect us, which she has before. Uh-huh. And anybody that messes with her babies is going to get her, get, get them some. She's like a mother grizzly bear who flips yes. out if you look at her babies. Yes. Every single time she, she literally says, she her quote to me every single time is, "Boy, you are the last of the Mohegans." You hear me? <laughs> that's literally her quote, and like that's, and it's that's true. One, that's literally true, and like that's one of the things that always like pops up in my pop, randomly randomly pops up in my head. And Isn't there a movie Last of the Mohegans? <laughs> Maybe. I, <laughs> I'll oh, I see, I see. I'm. I, I think I'm even older than your oldest uh, sibling. Um. So. There was a movie. I think I'm so I'm much older than you. So that it's not your fault. You don't get that reference. <laughs> totally not your fault. Um, so was you and you don't have to answer this if you don't want. Uh, did you have a, a father figure? Or I was it your not. older brother. I did not. My older brother was my father figure. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't know my oldest brother until he got out of jail one day. Oh, and you didn't know you even had a brother? Yeah, I didn't know at all, actually. And uh, he got out of jail. He was living with me, my mom, and my other, bro- my youngest brother, closest to my youngest brother, and one of my sisters. And I didn't know him. I was like, "Mom, who is this person that's that's coming to his house?" She's like, "Oh, that's your brother." I was like, "My brother?" I, don't, I thought I had because it was when I grew up, and I forgot that I had a couple of brothers and a couple of sisters. And then it's like I have flashbacks in my head about that, but I didn't know who they were. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So like. I thought that it was just me, my brother Michael, my sister Jasmine, us three. But mm-hmm. then when I got older, I realized like, hey, it's more than, it's more, it's more uh, sisters and brothers out there. And then and I realized that because they, they were never around because they was always either a sneaking out, mm-hmm. b uh, dealing with their dealing with the actual families, or just c just splitting, trying to make ends meet, pretty much. Sure. Sorry. No, no worries. Is now is that like as a child? Is that hard on you? Yes, it very much was because like uh, there was times where like uh, my sister, my youngest sister, would get into fights with uh, my my one of my mom's boyfriends, mm-hmm. and then it would escalate into her having to iron up and trying to kill him with the iron because he okay. put he put his hands on her and stuff like that. And I was like, I was like the youngest. I was in the bed crying. And then my other brother was like trying to be like, trying to make sure everything's okay. And Mm -hmm. the whole thing that was happening, I was like, I think I was like 12, 12 maybe. If 12, maybe, I don't know. But that's the one thing that I can't remember of her like protecting and standing up for my mom when she got hit. And was one of my sisters and I realized that like, she doesn't, she wants, she wanted the best for, we all wanted the best for our mom. Mm-hmm. And like, we, like, we all wanted the best for our mom. But when she was here, she was suffering. But mm-hmm. now that she's gone, she's living a better life than what she, than what she was suffering from, you know. So I, like, I don't say this in a negative, a negative way, but um, was it, you, as at a young age, you're dealing with like a lot of adult things. Mm-hmm. Is it, was, so like, did you ever get to like play, hang out, like have fun with your friends? Um, when I was, was that- when I was younger, like when I was like maybe like I think like in my best before maybe I was ten, maybe eight. Mm-hmm. I would say yes. Uh, I would say yes. We grew up like playing with our next door neighbors mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Uh. We had a cousin named uh, Kimani, which we would play with and everything like that, play with him. And mm-hmm. then we grew up with a girl named next door, uh, Aaliyah, and then we played with them. And then we realized that we were all related, it was all cousins, stuff like that, because it was it was a bond where, like, my brother, he knew them, and he knew, he it, that was his, that was, that was my brother's uh, friend. And mm-hmm. then uh, his 
his friend knew our his friend his friend sorry i'm sorry no no his friend son knew us okay that's how he was connected and then next door his his friend knew his friend knew his his daughter i think it was okay. and then it all like trickled down to like a tree effect and then we was all related somehow oh wow and we was legit related and we didn't like we just was best friends because we knew that like we all hung out together we played video games together we all like went outside to play basketball we all rode our bikes together we all played around us like our on the sidewalk or whatever it was a very 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 secure area but mm -hmm. some things may may got in haywire one day and like yeah it's just it was just it was a very very rough not rough but like very experienced like crazy crazy time because like i have a story for days yeah which i can tell you that but like mm -hmm. i need to be on a podcast with like my brothers my sisters and like we could all talk about it, like yeah, yeah. They, can, they so literally the round table for days. Yeah, that would be fire, though. A big round table. Yeah, fire. And who knows? Maybe you guys will realize I'm related to you too. Who knows? <laughs> I mean, it's oh, we'll see. You know, I, I, I'm not, I'm not a scientist, but who knows? <laughs> uh, oh, let me ask this: Was your family baseball fans? Yes. Okay, so my please mom, tell me your Sox fans. My mom, she loves the uh, Cubs. Oh, Jesus. I love the Sox. Okay, good, good. My brother, he loves the, uh, I think the Dodgers. I think it's the Dodgers. Okay. I think it's the Dodgers. We was playing MLB the other day, and he picked the Dodgers. Like, why are you picking the Dodgers? Why don't you pick the Sox? He's like, I, bro, you never... You never really. Oh my God, the Sox suck, bro. I was like, Well, yeah, because don't. the Dodgers have an all-star team. That's you know what I mean. They, <laughs> wait a minute, which MLB were you playing? The new one? Yeah, the new one. I have Game Pass, so I have the new one. Oh, for for what system? Xbox. Is it awesome? It's awesome. It's amazing. Uh, but when you have to like search for the uh, for once you have like a co-op team, mm -hmm. and you have to search for other uh, opponents. It takes a while, but it also like. It searches for two people, but it doesn't search for three people. It takes a while for three people. Is okay. This is how I determine if the game's difficult or not. Is stealing bases intuitive, like easy to do? It's very easy to do. They have the option to where you can set it to like certain uh, buttons, and you can set like oh, certain wow. buttons up. Because they have they this is this the first year that MLB the Show has been on Xbox. Or no, I could. It might be. No, what it is. I wanted to get it on uh, the. I have the Switch Lite. Okay. So yeah. I was trying actually, to decide if I should I get it so. for Xbox or that. Yeah, I think so. Actually, this is the first year it's been like cross, like not crossplay, but like actually, it's been the first year actually been crossplay. I'm thinking about it now. Yeah, yeah. That, I think like, you're Xbox, right. Switch, all that stuff. Oh God, I gotta get that. <laughs> See, I think I want to get it for like the um the light because my. Kids kind of dominate like the Xbox and stuff. I like to have the the handheld with me. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I have a Switch too as well, by the way. Yeah. Oh, do like the the console. Yes, I have a Switch. Uh, I have a blue and blue, not blue and red. Uh, a green and pink. Is it pink or is it red? Green, pink, Joy Cons. Okay, it's it's pink. It's the green and pink Joy Cons. I got the detachable one. I oh, got yeah. um. Zelda Breath of the Wild. I got Nintendo Switch Sports. I got Street Fighter 30th, edition, 30th Anniversary Edition. 30th Anniversary. And then I got uh, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duelist on there. It's a couple of things on there, too, as well. Wow. Um, I was going to say, I um, do, do you ever, like, in any of the 2K, the WWE 2K games, make yourself? Or have found that someone has made you? Yeah, I, I, both of those. Both of those. I had I actually had two people to make me, and uh, they look pretty awesome. I I, I want to give really? a shout out to those two people, and I know Did that they give I, you a good move set. I have like to similar to, moves, but I have I have to fix it myself. Yeah, yeah. You know, like from the one T. Was closer than the other. One was <laughs> one was definitely closer than the other, but okay. One was made by a grown man. The other was made by like an eleven-year-old. So. Okay, yeah. With <laughs> who needs glasses? That type of thing. <laughs> um. So okay. When does when does pro wrestling 
enter your like orbit. Okay, so I was sitting down in Indianapolis at like I was like 19, 20, 19, going on 20. And I was in Indianapolis. I was living with my cousin. Uh, I lived with my cousin. And then I said, let me just search schools. I'm just going to search schools. I legit search schools. And I was looking at these prices, these high prices. And then I contacted a certain school. Mm-hmm. And then they said, hey, it's this much to get started. Yada, yada, yada. So I had a job. I had a job. But I, had the, I had the job, but I also had the money. And yes. I went to go get trained locally. And then... I have met people like Hoodfoot, Sean Kemp, TJ Kemp. Uh, I met a lot of amazing people. Uh, Where did you meet them? I, I met like, at, like where you would train and stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I met oh, okay, okay. Oh, I thought like you, you'd met them in other places. and they, Oh, okay. No, I met them at this place. But uh, I met Cole and like, huh? Last thing, brother. Some people don't know. Cole Radrick. Yeah. He ain't that cool. Yeah, he's all right. <laughs> Hold on, can I ask you a question? Yeah. What, does a high priced training school necessarily mean a better training? It does. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. It teaches so, you everything besides just teaching you the basics. What's the cheapest you've ever seen? Ooh. How much did you pay? <laughs> I paid oh, really? Every I think every two weeks or every week or something like that. I forgot uh-huh. how much I paid. I put so much money into that. I was dedicated. I was there for too long. So what but, kind of things couldn't you do because the money was going to training? Uh, I like I was still like I got myself an apartment and everything like that, and uh-huh. like, I was I wasn't I was kept on training, but I knew that I like. I exceeded the training, but I wanted mm-hmm. to learn more. I think that like me wanting to learn more boosted like me learning new things. And I, every single time there'd be like an, an advanced class, mm-hmm. I would get excited, and then I would like, okay, I gotta learn this like learn this advanced class that I that I know that like if I learn it and then I actually do it and then I'm I'm learning more than what my brain can like you know that can teach me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm learning more than just learning headlock takeover, headlock, wrist, wrist, whatever. Like, I'm learning, I'm not, I'm necessarily learning moves for my moveset, but I know the Mm -hmm. basics already. Okay. And I'm, and I'm like adapting to new, newer things and trying to make sure that my repertoire of weapons are useful Mm -hmm. and my repertoire of promos are useful. And my repertoire of anything else that I need to learn is useful enough in the ring, and also for like backstage or anything like that. Mm-hmm. So do does does this typically happen where like you'll go to, so a wrestler will um, start with a certain trainer? Do the trainers like encourage you to learn from other trainers at all, or is it? It depends. You know what I mean to build it, you up. Yeah, it depends on what school you go to. Certain mm-hmm. people want you to stay with them, and certain people just want you to learn, succeed, and be the best you can be. And some people just want to hold you down. Mm-hmm. There's people out there in this world that want to hold you down, but you can't allow them to. You have to reach out and, like, not reach out, but, like, you have to break those barriers of being stuck in a certain spot. So, okay, so this is I, – I don't mean to be offensive. I, it, I hope, hope it doesn't come out this way. What at the time, before, you know, as you're looking for trainers, made you think you could be a pro wrestler? Like, like were you in like good shape, or that's what I mean? Not like, what made you think that you could be one? Uh, when I when I started, I wasn't. I knew that like I was. So this this is I'm not gonna lie to you, okay? This mm-hmm. is what happened. I literally was doing sit ups, sit ups. I had like a hundred sit ups a night. And then I looked at myself in the mirror. I said, you know what? You can do this. You can do this. And I was flexing in the mirror. I said, you know what? Yeah, look at those guns. You can do this. <laughs> and then next day after the surgery, for wrestling school, I was like, what am I doing? And then, like, I legit was working out before before I could. Uh, I was addicted to working out. And, oh, like, okay. so, like, I wasn't going to the gym or anything. I was doing push-ups, sit-ups, 
like certain kind of push ups, like different kind of push ups. The football diamond, I was doing diamond push ups and everything. Oh jeez! And then I was, yeah, I was, I was, I was, I was getting it, but uh, I was doing all that stuff, and I realized like I don't have anything to put all that into. Like I don't mm-hmm. have a like a. Uh, I used to run track and field. Okay. I used to run. I used to run track and field. I used to do football. I used to do basketball. I almost did tennis, but I, didn't, I, didn't, I couldn't find tennis. Mm-hmm. Uh, I almost, I almost did baseball too, but I couldn't find where to do baseball at. Because mm-hmm. when I went to Iowa for school, I actually went to Iowa for school one day. Okay. I went to Iowa for school, and I wanted to join a baseball team, but mm-hmm. I realized in Iowa there was a lot of white people on baseball teams. I was like, you know what? Maybe <laughs> yeah. I, maybe, maybe that's not a good idea for me right now. Maybe I should just stick to football or something like that. I was like. I was nervous to try those type of things, uh-huh. but now that but now that I'm more open and more visually can see that uh, you can put anything, you can do anything you put your mind to. Yes. Um, Maybe not in Iowa, but yeah, I would have. <laughs> I don't know what would have happened. I probably I don't know. I've been there a couple Maybe. of times. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a lot. It's a it's a lot. I'm not gonna disparage the state, but <laughs> I didn't have a very good time there. But anyways, yeah. um. <laughs> Okay, so you, you find a trainer. Are you like nervous at all? Like before the first, had you ever been in a wrestling ring before you uh, like, trained for the first time? I was addicted. I was okay. addicted. As soon as I got in the ring, I was addicted. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do it to the best of my abilities. If I don't, if I don't succeed, oh well. I did. I had fun. I had fun, and like it was like I got taught to take certain things and talk how to do certain things. And then mm-hmm. after I learned it and after I got comfortable doing it, after I like kept, um, I wanted more pretty mm-hmm. much. I wanted more, every single taste of it, every single bump. I legit wanted more. And then I got, just got hooked on it. It's like that you, I got hooked on it. Were you aware of how big the independent pro wrestling scene was? No. no. I was uh, not. What was the hardest thing to pick up on initially? Uh, like move wise, or like or, promo or anything like what? What they any part of training? Um, to be honest with you, I don't mean to be cocky right here, mm-hmm. but like I was, I was, I wasn't the best at my class, but I knew that people like recommended, like not recommended, but like seeing me it was like, dang. He can do all these things, but dang, he can do all these things, but can they cut a promo? He can do all these things, but can they connect with the crowd, which I was doing both of those things. Uh-huh. I was connecting with the crowd. I was doing the good moves, but I couldn't talk for anything. Really? And, and now, had that been since, like, childhood? Uh, like, yes. Like, public speaking or something to that yes. effect? If, like... Can it's, I put my two cents in? Go for Put it. three in, huh? <laughs> Miles is a very quiet person, just in general. Mm-hmm. So, like, a lot of times when you see them, even like in like you saw them in New Wave, like yeah. they're, they're able to capture a crowd without saying anything. Absolutely, so, like it's just their personality and like the charisma that they bring to the ring. So like while promos are not their strong suit, a lot of times like when it comes to actual show days, they mm-hmm. don't need to talk because their personality and like. How they present themselves does it for them. Yeah, the energy. But yeah, promos definitely are not their strong suit. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm a marble mouth. So, uh, you know, anybody saying a clear sentence uh, or two in a row um, is impressive to me. <laughs> um, so, but is that something like you were told to, you need to work on this, like get in front of a mirror or, you know, yeah. it was, was th- that wasn't a big part. Like, I like would that hold that. you back? Uh, yeah, I've only won, I never, like, at that school, I never won the big one, so because Mm -hmm. of, I felt like it was because of that, but it's also because they don't, they didn't see anything in me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I really, I really, I was the, I was a guy that lost to somebody I shouldn't, I should not be losing to, Mm -hmm. and, or get hit with a chair that I shouldn't have got hit with. Jesus. Uh, yeah, like, there was... But I've met people like <clears throat> I've met people like Calvin Tankman, mm-hmm. and I met people like Cole Roger. I've met people like Sean Kemp, 
and I met people like uh, Hoodfoot, like the original Sins. Like I've met good people, and like now that I see where their progress is, is has uh-huh. gone, I've realized that like there's more. There's there's something about me that's special mm-hmm. enough to where like I can reach the levels that I've been thinking that I couldn't reach. Sure, sure. And no. like, go ahead, go ahead. No, 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 you go ahead. Like, like it's 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 very heartwarming seeing my friends on TV, and it's like, like I don't I don't say like, damn, I wish I could be doing that. I say, damn, I'm gonna be there one day. Like, I keep on telling myself that I'm gonna be there one day, knowing that I really am. And mm-hmm. I feel like I'm on the cuffs of breaking into something that like nobody like. Not nobody's ever seen, but like breaking into something that is something that's going to happen to me, regardless of like, like whatever I do. And I feel like something's getting ready to happen, but I've had that aura about me lately that something's ready to happen, and I don't know what's happening yet. But it's like I'm just going to enjoy and ride with it, pretty much. How do you feel about this? Um, can you like um, step outside of yourself and say like and know that like. You're pretty, you know, you're a pretty big name on the independent wrestling scene and like, you know, really good wrestler. Are you able to accept that or not? Mm, Are you? (laughs) Uh, I can't say that. I know, I know. But like, are you proud of yourself where you are right now from where you started? Like, can you at least like be proud of yourself and recognize, oh my God. Yeah, I can. Mm -hmm. But I'm always looking for like, what else can I improve on or what else can I, sorry, excuse me. What else can I, what else can I improve on? What else can I get better at? What else can I do something that nobody else has done? Nobody Mm -hmm. else is doing. And how can I make it my own? Do you find like, even when you're not wrestling or, you know, I don't know, doing whatever, are you thinking about wrestling almost 24 hours a day i i'm not gonna lie to you since mm-hmm. i've been like on a vacation like vi- quote-unquote vacation yeah. right now sure. i i haven't been watching wrestling i just watched wrestling last night mm-hmm. and all i watched before that was bad wrestling yeah it's tbw and, <laughs> uh it was tbw it was uh cottage Hills wrestling okay and, like i will watch that for like a couple a couple of hours or whatever. And then mm-hmm. I realized to myself, I'm like, I'm not that no be no offense, but I'm not that bad. And then I was just like, I was just be like, okay, now you can now you can turn it off. Now you can switch your brain off. And then I realized like the matches that I've had, like I'm very fortunate to face Ace Perry. I'm mm-hmm. very I was very fortunate to face Chase Holiday. You faced Giza and Ace right. in the same day. I faced like wow. Giza, Ace in the same day when I was having a very, very rough mental breakdown or like you also <laughs> Stage Phillips, Eric Dillinger, and Chase Holiday all in the same day. Did I? Yeah, that was really Oh yeah. All all within two hours of each other, realistically. Oh yeah. I can barely get myself to eat two meals a day, let alone yeah. like geez. If you if you go to through uh IWTV, yeah. And then you go to New Wave Pro and then you mm-hmm. go to uh, see you at the crossroads. Mm-hmm. Like I've that whole entire day, I was just wrestling. That that was also a uh, day. You said the collective? No, it was okay. a different weekend. Okay. This was, uh, day two of a three day weekend where Miles actually ended up doing nine matches in one weekend. Wow, wow. That's what yeah. I. That's 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 one of those things where I look back and just be like, damn, I really I did, did that. that. Like I really did that. I, I I sometimes want to go back and relive those moments, but I'm like, I'm very grateful for the first that caught that, that like, I can relive it again, you know? That, that, that someone wanted you or some group of people wanted you nine times, you know, like, is, yeah. is, is very impressive. It's, it's really, it's really crazy to where like people are requesting to fight, like, Requesting to wrestle me, yeah, yeah. Like, I never thought that I would be in this position. People like to be like, I want to wrestle Miles. I'm trying to figure out. I'm still at the phase. Of, I'm still at the page to where like I'm trying to flip the page. Uh-huh. I'm trying to figure out why do people want to wrestle me, and but like it's like 
okay, they want to have a good match with me, but like, why? Yeah, I'm just, yeah, yeah. I'm just myself. Like, where is it going? We're not, we're like, not like where is it going, but like, like, why me? Am I that special to wrestle? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think of myself as like giving back mm-hmm. to anybody that I wrestle, anything that I'm doing, and then like it's just, it's like. I want to elevate both of us instead of me elevating myself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, can you have a good match with someone you've never met before? Oh yeah, I had it possible. I had a great match with. I've never met Trisha Dora before. Uh huh. And then, like the first night at OWA at Good Trouble One, we uh-huh. hit it off just like that, and then like we had a great match. And then there was just something was there, a vibe was there, something was going on, and I just. You and Christian Robinson is another one. Oh uh, yeah, me and Christian Robinson. I never met the guy, but he's chill as all hell. Like, oh really? Yeah, me and Christian a, Robinson. Have a good match with you during a mental breakdown, during your mental breakdown. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh really? Yeah, I had a whole ass mental breakdown, and I, all I could think about was literally just wrestling, and I couldn't think about it clearly. But uh-huh. I was trying. I, we was like after the match, we talked about it, and I was like, man. Like even on my worst day, I've like I've had help. I'd had help to to get me through this bad cloudy day. Like yeah. I had wrestling always there. Like Christian Robinson, we literally put on a banger, and it's on IWTV. It's what Coachella. Uh, it's Mochella. Yeah. Mochella. Fight. It, no, first, first wrestling. No, first battle club. Whatever. It's in DC. But yeah, Mochella season. But yeah, two. season two of Mochella. It's like. It's it it was it was very it was very lit. I would mm-hmm. say that. it was very lit and uh I would love to like I just the fact that we we were in DC was a, like let alone like amazing the fact that like I, they asked you to go there. Yeah, they asked me to go there and I was just like yeah. whoa, like <laughs> we're going to DC like I've never been to DC before and then we got there and it was like a whole nother like open door pretty much. And and do you um, do you ever plan on wrestling outside of uh, the United States? Oh yeah, of course, of course. I I, I plan to. And well, I, how does I that happen? To. Like how do like someone go, go from you know Chicago, you know the Midwest to Japan? Now, I'm not saying specifically you, but like do you have to know someone or do you just go there on your own? Um, a lot of times you work with a, at least one or two promotions from that country and they help you set everything up. Got it. And they kind of like, ex- from my knowledge at least, they kind of like put out your information and you just kind of push it even more. And then you do a Max the Impaler where you have like, you know, a month over there and it's just solid bookings. So that's the dream. I just want to, because um, a lot of my viewers and listeners are uh dumb or whatever my wife calls it like <laughs> dumb uh i just want them to know that when you're not speaking and they hear a voice that's not you like professor xavier um speaking just <laughs> without moving your mouth i just want to we have some ignorant um uh, listeners and viewers and stuff was don't die miles your god-given name <laughs> or so how did that how did don't die miles come about then so I got chosen the name of Miles Morales, mm-hmm. which was a uh, Marvel character. Sure, of course. And it was about four. I went with that name for about four years. Mm-hmm. And then I said, you know what? I'm tired of Spider-Man bull crap. <laughs> I'm so sorry for the person that changed and wanted me to not change my name. I come out to Sunflower all the time. I just kept the theme song, mm-hmm. changed my name, got Spider-Man killed off. And I went with "Don't Die" because it's more of a it's more of a realistic thing for me. Mm-hmm. Oh, the fans already chanted it. Yeah, the fans pretty much <laughs> already chanted it. They they sealed my fate with that. And then I, but like yeah, like I, it it wasn't. I wanted to go by. It's so, it's so stupid. I wanted to go by Miles Davis, but uh-huh. it was like, no. He's like, no, it's not your name. Like, <laughs> okay, what's my name going to be? Mark Morales. I was like, okay. Now, word it was terrible, it was so terrible. I'm so sorry, but it was. Did it you was, not... was your ring attire Spider Man like related at first? Like, did you have to have some tie in to that? Um, my first appearance, it was not, but uh-huh. then after it was 
Okay, I'm not gonna. I, I like the Spider Man gimmick when it when I was at I actually wrestled a Spider Man costume okay. at Bizarro Lucha. Oh wow! And then I love that. Like Bizarro Lucha was like the 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 WWE of fucking indie. Like uh-huh. it was amazing. Like they had Calvin Tina at NJL. They had Shotzi Blackheart. Like they had everybody that was there was somebody that was a name and that was being brought in to perform on the highest level of independent wrestling and i've always wanted to be on there and i'm so happy that i've always been a part as i is that that i've been a part of it mm-hmm. and i would love for them to hopefully one day like come back and i can just i just want to be there and watch good wrestling like it, it was awesome like you can see people like this that's literally on tv right now it's like wild to me back to the point. but back to the point i'm sorry <laughs> no, no uh, i like listening but the spider-man trunks uh I've gotten that from a, uh, from a, from a, a mentor, from a mentor. Oh, and cool. I like I passed really, down, not passed, not passed down. They, they made them. And Got then it. I was still going by miles Morales, miles Morales at the time. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, they, they told me, Hey, these are yours. I said, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. And I, I just, after that, like fourth year or whatever, I wasn't really feeling like myself, and mm-hmm. I wanted to go in a whole different direction. And I wanted to make a change of myself, and I pretty much did it. Um, like they they named me Trunks. I said thank you. Mm-hmm. I, I I still talk to them. Uh, my phone's going to die. I'm twenty percent. Thank you. I'll, I'll speed it up. I'll speed it up. No, you're good. I got a charger over here waiting on me. Oh, okay, uh, perfect. But yeah, like I, they passed. They they literally made me trunks. They t- they take care of me. They still take care of me until this day. That's um, amazing. They 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 literally my mom and dad that I've never like. They're not biologically, but like they're my mom and dad, sure. uh, wrestling mom and dad. Um, but yeah, they always take care of me. They always have taken care of me. They always will take care of me. I know that like I'm on their 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 group. They great great sons that, that they're very proud of and I and I love them um, tremendously a lot and I'm just very grateful for the fact that like that they helped me even when even when my chips were down, you know? Yeah. And they You're very they, lucky in that sense. Yeah, I know. Like I I'm just gonna say it. Nikki and Donnie, they mm-hmm. really helped me a lot. They they've been there for most of Indy. Uh, for most of indie uh, wrestlers as well, they they take care of people and they're very nice. They're very, they're very, they're very kind to the people that they love, and I, I I'm just very grateful to have it in my life. If you ever get your hands on cloning technology, send a pair of them to me. I could use. Uh, it sounds like I could use two of those people in my corner. Um, do you do you ever wake up on like the day of a show and like Ugh, I don't want to wrestle the night. Oh, or can you not answer that on in public? I mean, hey, there's been days where I didn't want to do it. I was because it's a job too, right? Like, yeah, it definitely is a job because, like, there's been days where I just didn't want to do it. Like, I'm not gonna. I'm okay. So the Ben show, there was a show, a BSB show, the Ben show that I really, I really didn't want to do it, but I had to do it because I wanted, I needed money, Uh but I also didn't know who the Russell twins were. But also, I did my homework and I researched them, and then I've like, I've researched them, and then I realized that like, hey, you gotta get your like, you gotta get your shit together. You gotta, do, you gotta put on for these fans, get, mm-hmm. your, get your ish together, and go out there and have fun. And then I was like, I started studying, started looking at YouTube tapes and everything, and then I just, I just went out there, and did the best I could, and just try to shake that funk off me and try mm-hmm. to. Just, <coughs> just put on for the fans and try to make a great match and make an awesome match and try to do what I can to yeah yeah stay in, this, in my headspace because there's there's been days where I really didn't want to wrestle but I realized I turn I make a whole like three sixty mm-hmm. and then I just click it on like that and then it's like I'm in wrestling mode now you know yeah and like afterwards you're like oh I'm glad I I'm glad that uh, you know I got to oh yeah tonight. yeah like See, I'm very. Very, very good for the wrestle. Do you have a shoot job? Mm-hmm. 
Yes, I do. I work okay. at GameStop. I don't make no, a lot of money, but I work at GameStop. Oh, really? Yeah. That's what that's that's one of the things that, like I before I worked at Taco Bell mm-hmm. or whatever, like I was like, all right, I don't like this job. It's it's all this is food, it's all this is fast food. Yeah. I can get food anywhere. And I was like, what if I work at GameStop? And then my girlfriend Jay, huh? she was like, she's like awesome. She's like, why don't you just do something you love? I was like, all right, cool, fuck it. I'm gonna go to GameStop. And then uh-huh. I went to GameStop, they was hiring, they hired me. I said, Hey. I'm laying all my chips on, chips on the line right now. I'm gonna tell y'all everything. Like, not tell y'all everything, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell y'all what I love to do and what mm-hmm. I'm what I'm very passionate, secondly passionate about doing. They work with my wrestling schedule. Uh, they I work Monday through Thursday. I work in That's Avon. Awesome. Like, yeah. Do you and, ever have free time? Uh, <laughs> like, like, have you gone on a vacation, say, in the last two years without wrestling on that vacation? Not really. Not really. I have been like I go fishing with TJ, but like mm-hmm. vacation, vacation, not really. I wish it would be nice I'll to have a vacation. But one day I'll get there. I have a paid vacation from wrestling. Oh see, that would be nice. Um be at what point um in our discussion did you realize you could beat the shit out of me pretty easily? Was it early on? middle <laughs> towards the end because your no. instincts are correct if that's what you're feeling um, no. right now um, I, I don't like like i don't like physically hurting people like, <laughs> for a cause mm-hmm. like if it's for a cause like there's people in here that you know that I, that, that, that that really that really you know you know what you trying to say not you okay yes <laughs> it's, it's it's just it's just i don't Miles is a very passive human being unless the bell rings. It's kind of like a oh, okay. h- horrible comparison, but uh, kind of like Festus, where he's just kind of like vibing, oh. and then yeah, the yeah. bell rings, and it's a monster. It's That's how I like <laughs> Miles. It's like whenever that big, like whenever I'm, whenever I'm going to the ring, I'm like, oh, yeah, we're wrestling. Oh, yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, we're doing interest or whatever. Then when they get in the ring, then the bell rings, like, oh, no, now yeah. I got this pent-up aggression. It comes out of nowhere. I got to get it all out. Pay them bills. Like, I got to beat these bills up out of me or something like that. <laughs> Did, have you, uh, have your siblings seen you wrestle? Yes, they came to the NLS show in Chicago. They actually, oh, cool. They if you ever got into, like, a fight with any of them, or is there any of your siblings that could take you down or at this I, point, no, you're uh, you got the youth on your side. <laughs> but I tried it before; it mm-hmm. didn't work out for me. It, it, it got did. pretty strange. <laughs> yeah, that man. man's I, like a three hundred pound, four hundred pound monster, man. He's like he's like if Mark Henry was just like Mark Henry without <laughs> without without the dreads. Oh, oh yeah, cut. yeah, bro. Like my oldest brother's like he had a goatee like me. He got a whole buzz cut. He's missing. He's missing some of his hair, but he's okay. Uh, <laughs> he's fine. Uh, my other brother has braids. He's big. He's big. He's like Mark Henry. Like it's like okay. So if let me see who else. Yeah. Is big Show. If Big Show and Mark Henry had a baby, then I'll be my other brother. And then really? yeah, it's it's funny. It's just it's it's so funny because like we would all of us would be at the table. Uh-huh. We'll start roasting each other, but then uh-huh. he would get upset and get up and start walking off. Oh, really? It'll be it's 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 a good time. It's really it's really a good time. What about, I miss like is I miss it hard like having your is it hard maintaining like a relationship with like say like your girlfriend? Like is I mean is there enough time to find for them as well? Um, I'm the business manager, so I'm with. Oh, them. okay. <laughs> Oh, yeah, she's with us all the time. That's perfect sense. She's trying to get like she's with us all the time, twenty four seven. So like, I look at her every single day, and I'm like, I love you, <laughs> love you. That's because I get you booking. <laughs> no, no, no. I actually love. I actually love you. Is she just like a human iPhone to you, or do you love? Her? <laughs> okay, like, listen. Like I don't want to cause like, any oh, fights. Um, good. Can I ask you? Five non wrestling related yes or no questions. Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, have you ever stolen something from a senior citizen? 
Uh, have I? I think I have. Really? No, I and I'm not I, judging you. I don't think I, I. I'm torn about that question because I think. I mean, you steal dubs from old people all the time in the ring, so old people. Oh. Old I accept people. that as an answer. Who is the old people? Brother. Me. Oh, Sam Knight. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just I kidding. He, I'm just I kidding. And send it to him, and he's gonna make <laughs> that clip. Okay, I'm gonna count that as a yes. You have. Um, <laughs> and maybe this question, this next one's better for your girlfriend. But I'll ask you still: Can you sleep um, hanging upside down like a vampire? No. Or have you ever? Has that ever happened? Uh, no. No, you're good. Have you? Have you no. ever? No. Okay. You need the entire bed to sleep. All right, this is a big oh, one. Yeah. For $32 million, this is the most I've ever offered anybody. Would you stop using any sort of telephone device forever? Like no iPhone. So so I got a question for you. Mm-hmm. So would I would I be able to call the hospital if I, something ever happened to me? Emergencies, yes. So only emergencies. Mm-hmm. A fire, it's, it's, illness. Mine's the cops. Mine's the cops, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Okay, cool, Anything cool, cool. that involves <laughs> uh, lights flashing or loud sounds, uh, you could use the phone for. Okay, cool. Otherwise, cool. you can't check scores. You can't play games. <sighs> Would I be able to live? 32 on? million. Because you'd get, I mean, you'd still have <laughs> like, you'd still have internet access, you know, on like a computer. Okay. You could take the thirty maybe, million dollars. Maybe, maybe so. I'm trying. To, You'd be just, fine. Yeah, I'll be fine. I'm just like all I do is get on my Xbox. I, if you said my Xbox, then I, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a completely different thing, and I understand. I wouldn't have even uh, brought that that into this <laughs> equation. Um. Okay. Are there any? This is question number four. You're doing awesome. Are there any like life size uh, nude sculptures, not necessarily of yourself, but maybe um, where you live? No. Okay. Finally, do you prefer chopsticks to a fork? Oh, I haven't. So, see, we go to Panda Express, mm-hmm. but I haven't gotten the chopsticks yet. I'm yeah. so terrified of getting chopsticks. I don't know it, why, but I'm like, I'm, I'm scared of the new experience of finger, like finger, like finger, like finger chopsticks. I'm scared of it. And I, I think I'm probably going to offend a, a pretty big country. Um, I think forks are just as efficient in 2022. Than, yeah. uh, than chopsticks. But that's just me. I don't want to offend China. I apologize. <laughs> um, where are you going to be uh, appearing next? Are you, You're you taking it a little easy? Yeah, I'm taking it a little easy. Uh, okay. June 4th is Unsanctioned, Unsanctioned Pro. Pro. And then the okay. next day after Unsanctioned, hopefully, fingers crossed, is DPW mm-hmm. in North Carolina. And then... That Friday, it's going to be Paradigm uh, in Indianapolis and Jeffersonville. Mm-hmm. And then the next Iowa. day is Iowa. And then the next day is Colorado. And then the next day is Colorado. And then we get one travel day before girl fight. And then we get one travel day before girl fight. Every weekend. What type every of every taking weekend. it easy is this? I, I'm trying. I, 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 like, I don't, think that, I don't know if you actually know the definition of taking right? it easy. It was a two week break. She, she books me and then she, she tell me, Oh, you got this, that, that. I'm like, Where's my break at, honey? Yeah, Where's I, mean, I was concerned at, about your judgment. <laughs> you got a two week break. You agreed to pick up hybrid last Friday. That's not on me. And the one on Saturday, you literally have to be there for your match and then we can leave. I don't <laughs> want to hear it. <laughs> Before I let you go, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to reveal to the world and to you. Um, so when I was in high school, I worked at Subway and right next door was a, a, a store called Funko Land, which was eventually became GameStop. Yeah. And now I was a kid. I was a teenager, not like a nice, you know, like a dumb kid. And at night when I closed Subway, um, the Funko Land GameStop was, you know, right next door. And I throw myself up against the wall and knock all the games off the floor. <laughs> and uh, I used to get in a lot of trouble for that. And I think one time, like, the police came or something, like, it tripped an <laughs> alarm at some point. But then I stopped working at Subway. So it was the temptation was never there again. <laughs> Miles, thank you so much uh, 
for coming on and giving me your time. I, I really do appreciate it. I had a lot of fun talking to you. Um, and hopefully I would, uh, we could do it again in the future when, when you're on another break or taking it easy <laughs> again. Um, but yeah, especially on a break that you just described, thank you for fitting me in tonight. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. Like I, I literally feel I was nervous about this podcast. Yeah. Now I'm just like, oh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a flow. Forget it. Oh, you're good. You're I'm good. You go on any podcast. You were, you were a great guest. Um, I'm well, you're welcome. Anytime you have to make a declaration to the world about something, please. I won't even be on here. Like you can just water. do it yourself. I'm a flow like water. Yeah, you know, you're good. Um, all right. Thank you again. And uh, to your business manager and uh, girlfriend, uh, thank her as well. Um, she probably heard me say that, yeah. but um, you can do it off the air as well. All right. You take care. I wish you nothing but health and happiness. And uh, hopefully we'll talk again. Thank you so much. All right. Take care. It. Bye. Peace.